In early 2017, Jason finally decides to get back in shape. He had previously agreed to compete in the Ruby Classic alongside Big Lenny and longtime rival Dale Chunky Cheese Chance. Jason claims this will be his last bodybuilding show before turning to acting, but also announces plans to complete in the March CJ Classic. To add to an already full plate, he plans to enter the Beat PJ contest, where he could possibly win $5,000 if he makes a more impressive physical improvement than PJ Braun after three months. PJ even offers to double the prize money if Jason wins, but like everyone else, Jason still has to purchase a Blackstone Labs product to enter the contest. Like a true friend, Jason buys the cheapest product available, then extorts PJ out of gas money and free supplements. The subsequent workouts prove to be the first good videos Jason has produced in a long time. This comes as some relief to the witnesses who had been deprived of men's for the better part of 2016. Side note. I realized I've used the term meant multiple times without properly explaining its meaning. This was simply an oversight on my part. The original draft I wrote for this series was significantly longer, likely running over two and a half hours without even delving into the forums or other more ancillary activities of the Genova's Witnesses. As I began to edit down my first draft, I wanted to focus on what I believe to be the primary narrative threads and running themes of Jason's story. In the process, I removed various bits and pieces that didn't cohesively flow with everything else, but I forgot to remove all of the references. Which is why, in the off chance you aren't a diehard fan of Jason Genova, you might have wondered what I was referring to when I used the word meant. To make a long story even longer, around the time Andrew refused to film Jason over the Cambergate scandal, Jason released a video where he was looking at a poster of Arnold Schwarzenegger and misread the word enjoyment as enjoy the meant. Arnold, journ and enjoy the the mint the mint the mint. That's what uh Mr. Genova wants to look like. He'll get there. He, I mean, he's doing pretty good. Over time, this one slip up became synonymous with Jason and the community of people who enjoy his content, or in other words, they enjoy the mint. Although the mint drought seems to be at an end, Jason's physique is possibly worse than it has ever been before. Jason may only be in the low 200 pound range, but he appears to have traded considerable muscle mass for fat. Even with the help of IFBB pro bodybuilder Cody Montgomery, he makes little progress. In videos leading up to the CJ Classic, it's clear that he is in no shape to compete, and even the Misfits encourage him not to. He is now rarely featured in Delray Misfits videos, which have shifted focus primarily to Big Lenny as well as Big J Masters. During a video shot in the waning days before the CJ Classic, Jason is seen with his stomach covered in Preparation H and plastic wrap in a desperate attempt to lose weight. Brett and Andrew try to convince him not to, but Jason likely hopped up on sketchy pre-workout supplements, reads comments from his Instagram comparing his current physique to that of the Adam Harper era. They're obviously sarcastic, but Jason appears to take them seriously. Harper, I'm starting to get back to shape. Everybody's saying Adam Harper. Aaron, they're saying still, it again. Still can't they're shave They're saying properly. it again on my IG. See, this is what happens. Look at the photos, man. When you shave and you're. They're shaking. saying it again on IG. I don't give a fuck. I'm on. Jason, Jason, Jason. I don't give a fuck. Jason. Yeah. Look at how fucking hyper you are. Why don't Look, you let everybody know what Adam, you're taking? Close to Adam so Harper ever again. Getting it back because I'm taking so much crap. You only see one nice comment. The rest. Oh no, they're comment. all good comments. All of them. Really? All. Look Look at how many likes I got on this photo. He's over a thousand. Andrew refuses to film Jason at the CJ, so the event is filmed by misfit and occasional cameraman Nate Figueroa. Jason's physique is terrible. Not only does he look smaller than in previous shows, but he also has a gut and virtually no definition in any part of his body. His posing ability has marginally improved, but... He still rushes through the routine and has to repeat it multiple times. He comes in fifth place out of five. When Jason's car breaks down, PJ Braun once again takes time out of his life to help, even though Blackstone Labs had recently been raided by the FDA for questionable chemicals in one of their products. PJ had also previously been embroiled in a legal battle with Jason's former coach, Adam Harper, which was settled out of court. Additionally, Aaron Singerman split from Blackstone to create his own company named Redcon One. At first, the split was amicable, but PJ would later accuse Aaron of stealing the Blackstone Labs client emailing list for his own ends. Now that I know that this email list has been taken from me, I have also been notified by 
a number of people that they are getting emails from Redcon 1 uh, and perhaps Dynamic Muscle, but more specifically Redcon 1. And uh, it is important that everybody knows that we have no affiliation with Redcon 1 at all. I am not involved with Redcon 1. I am 100% Blackstone Labs. And I think that it's important that everybody understands that, what that means. From day one, my passion has been about Blackstone Labs. And yes, I am involved in other things as well. I have celestial bodies. I've gotten involved with... To make things even worse for PJ, after recently divorcing his wife Celeste, the two are involved in a struggle for control of the celestial body's clothing line. PJ still offers to give Jason a Nissan Juke if Jason can learn to drive manual. In spite of PJ's best efforts to teach him, Jason is unable to. Um, I'm getting the hang of it. You are, but you're not ready to drive this car yet. Um, let's see if we can get parked safely. You know what, let's just park it straight in here. You can park it straight in here. Uh -huh. Straight into the spot right here, straight ahead. Right here. Yep. No, 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 That's well, all right, fine, fine, fine. Here's fine. No, no, no. Hold, hold your foot on the clutch. Hold your foot on the clutch. Clutch. Okay. <laughs> you can't drive Let's up. let it roll a little bit. Um. Jason also blatantly lies about placing last in the CJ Classic, claiming he was paid $500 to guest pose. Still without a car, Jason is forced to ride a bike around. Perhaps noticing the money the misfit maniacs raised to clean Big Lenny's house, Jason starts his own GoFundMe for a new car which receives literally zero donations. The quality of Jason's videos has also dropped off dramatically. Jason appears even less mentally stable than usual, often repeating himself endlessly, or breaking out into weird episodes. Fuck you, people. Boom. Ah! Flipping people off with the bird. It's sick. It's pissed. It's revolting. It's insulting. Woo! Nature boy Rick Larinen. Macho man, Randy Savage, oh yeah, snap it to a Slim Jim. It's sick, it's piss, I must have ate my crack this morning. Crackhead. Diet. Woo, fuck you, boo, boo, you idiots. Flipping people off with the bird. Hate for Genova reaches an unprecedented level. Videos are disliked at ratios of 10 to 1 and fans start unsubscribing. After a talking to from Brad, Jason seems to realize that he needs to change his ways. He promises to stop lying and also admits that he will be getting a used Acura from his mother. Having reconciled with his old producer, Jonas, months prior, the two release My Story Part 9. The incoherent pastiche of randomly cobbled together clips is nearly unwatchable, even by the standard of previous installments. For an unknown reason, the two believe they can charge the witnesses to watch the video, but they make a grand total of $30. Jonas and Jason once again part ways. A phone call between Jonas and a fit miscuser later emerges, where Jonas confirms previous accusations that Jane takes the money Jason earns from Publix and YouTube. Jonas alleges that Jane only leaves Jason a $70 allowance after paying his bills. He also accuses Andrew of taking money earned from the Delray Misfits channel without paying any of the misfits. After the My Story Part 9 debacle, a man calling himself Johnny Bravo comes to Delray Beach to film a documentary about Jason. The documentary is well filmed, but an overly dramatic look at Jason's life. For some reason, Mr. Bravo talks in an affected voice, and the film heavily focuses on Jason's mental disabilities. For arguably the first time, Jason openly discusses his slight Slight, you can't even see it. I don't even think it's like 1% of autism. Maybe Jason finally realized the benefits of portraying himself as an inspirational figure, valiantly overcoming the obstacles life has put in his path. Either way, Johnny Bravo is engaged in a feud with YouTube bodybuilder Cali Chuck Basher Muscle. This results in Jason Order 66 in Cali, who calls Jason's fans retarded for following a retard. Callie, who had at one point released a video where he used voodoo curses to fend off a previous Order 66, So that's your last one. I'll see you on the other side. Uh, uh, watch him behind me. He's always watching me. Yes, yes. See him? Oh, yeah, you see him. Look at him mistakes the Star Wars reference for the Mark of the Beast and calls the Piss Troopers Devil Worshippers. 
Though Callie's YouTube channel has over 1 million subscribers to Jason's 40,000, the sheer ferocity of the angered piss troopers is overwhelming and results in Callie reading many of the absurd comments on camera. Kyle, Kai Green, to you end your Order 66 nightmare, you must read Book and Journey to the Jedi Temple. When you get there, purify yourself in the warm piss waters of Lake Crestford and swim with the ancient dolphins from the 70s. It's less stress. Order 66, the like and all above, baby. Woo, the African guy know. In preparation for the ruby, Jason teams up with another Blackstone athlete named Karen Yoakum. Karen puts Jason through a fairly intense workout by his standards, making him do cardio and burpees. Even though Jason suspiciously misses several of Karen's intense workouts, the two finally get back together in the gym. Aside from mysteriously deciding to change the meal plan Karen gave him, Jason does work surprisingly hard in the gym. Furthermore, Jason becomes involved with another female Blackstone athlete named Diana Maybrook. Jason appears spent with Diana, who brutally shuts down his advances on multiple occasions, eventually friendzoning him completely. My pretty, my pretty sis is cooking me nice food for dinner when she goes, so I have some nice food to eat. And we locked ourselves out like a bunch of idiots. Oh my god, I was here for five minutes and Jason locks himself out and loses his car keys. Yes. Yes. Let's talk about these cups. They're the wrecking balls of cups. <laughs> the dirty cups. Oh, yeah, I asked Jason for a glass of water. And there's like all this like dirt and gunk in the cup. <laughs> I have to clean tomorrow. Tomorrow's my cleaning day. Uh-huh. Unfortunately, their friendship comes to an abrupt end when the Delray playboy alludes to having sex with her on Muscle Sport TV. Most sensible people assumed Diana was out of her depth and would be swallowed up by the piss waves of Lake Kresva. This was on display when she called Jason a liar and attacked the witnesses. They once again go rogue and attack Diana, even though Jason apologizes to her. For some reason, Diana runs to Mark Lobliner for support. Embroiled in yet another Order 66, Lobster Prick goes after the piss troopers himself. However, Jason orders 66's Mark again, and he quickly backs out of the conflict. All alone, Diana is forced to delete her Twitter and disable likes and dislikes on her videos. Irrespective of his YouTube channel, Jason is in better shape than he has been in some time. Big J Masters even convinces him to compete at 170 so he won't have to face off against larger opponents at light heavyweight. Jason looks almost as good as he did before the 2015 Ruby show, and approaching the physique he had during the Adam Harper era. But none of this will shield him from the storm that is about to hit. On August 10, 2017, Internet fitness icon and living meme, Rich Piana, goes into cardiac arrest and is eventually put into a medically induced coma. When a troll convinces Jason that Rich has died, Genova falsely reports of Piana's death. My thoughts, he never collabed with me again, so he deserves what he gets. Rich Piana deserves what he gets. He died from um, brain damage, but he deserves what he gets. For those of you not invested in the YouTube fitness community, it may be hard to grasp the sheer scale of this fuck-up. But trust me when I say it was monumental. Piana's fan base may consist almost entirely of trolls, but he is one of the most beloved and cherished internet bodybuilding icons. To not only mock his death, but to do so for such petty reasons was a step too far even for Jason. At the time, Johnny Bravo and his partner, Sandy Calora, were in the process of filming a short promo for a planned documentary about the Dowry Misfits, but they realized they need to cover the events that are unfolding. They interviewed Jason, who blames his actions on his diet and intake of multiple supplements. Blaming Blackstone Labs products probably didn't make it any harder for PJ Braun to officially sever all ties with Genova. Later in the video, Andrew, Brad, and Jason's mother are assembled to discuss whether or not Jason will be allowed to take part in the documentary. Although Andrew insists that Jason should be kept out of the Delray Misfits documentary, the group eventually agree to give him one more chance. However, matters are only made worse when Piana actually passes away. Without his team of Blackstone coaches, Jason is being trained by his mother. His body fat had previously been 11%, which would be even lower than during the Adam Harper era, but now he's barely working out, and his physique rapidly declines. 
Six days out from the ruby, his body fat is up to 15%, and he now has a gut. He tries to blame his weight on the grocery stores being shut down because of Hurricane Irma. The more likely explanation is that, without a meal plan or a team of professional bodybuilders babysitting him, Jason reverted back to eating fast food multiple times per day. As when I started my diet, I was way too deep in the fat range, okay? When I got my body fat tested, I'm going to tell you what my body fat was. This is impressive. I went from Hindenburg, 35% body fat. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a lot of fucking body fat. All the way down to 11, and now I'm 14. If I can get down to 12, that is fucking, how much is that? That's 35% from 12. That's 20-something percent body fat. I was a fat couple do, large. Do you remember the, the Misfit episode we did on July 11th? Uh, I think it was called A Morning with the Madman. And mm -hmm. you were really on the right path then. Yeah, I was. You were looking really lean, almost too lean. What the fuck happened between then and now? In two months, you went from really being on the right path to... When it's obvious he won't be able to make 170, Jason decides to bulk up for the light heavyweight division. However, he manages to completely leapfrog the division and end up at heavyweight. Somehow, Jason looks worse than Big Lenny, whose contest prep was interrupted by a week-long stay in the hospital for atrial fibrillation. In a backstage video, Jason reveals he is now 203 pounds. Brad grills him about making a mockery of the event by showing up in Hindenburg mode while the other competitors take the show seriously. Jason's physique is so embarrassing that even though he's been competing for over a decade, he gets booted to the novice class. Even after Andrew shouts for him to hold his poses, Jason rushes through his entire routine multiple times. Because there are only two competitors in the novice division, Jason gets second place by default. After the Ruby show, Jason's YouTube channel goes even further into the toilet if that is imaginable. He barely uploads lifting videos anymore, and witnesses are tired of the boring vlogs. The dislike ratio is still in the 90% range. He briefly announces plans to do another bodybuilding show in November, but changes his mind when he decides to become a Twitch streamer. Since Jason has never talked about video games, it's likely another attempt by the Iron Extortionist to scam donations out of his fans. He unbelievably receives a free PlayStation 4 and a gaming computer for somebody trying to leech off of Jason's moderate internet fame. Like everyone else who tries this tactic, it predictably backfires when Jason is banned from Twitch for posing in a speedo on his live stream. Several months after his comments about Rich Piana, Jason begs to be reunited with his brother, PJ. In the beginning of the video, PJ acknowledges that the Blackstone Lab staff are still mad at Jason and do not want him around. And um, Jason Genova is here. First time he's been here since shit went down. So it's going to be pretty interesting. He's been bothering me a lot. And the staff does not want Jason here, to be completely honest. Everybody was very upset over his actions, uh, over all the, the, the things that he did with the whole Rich Piana and everything else. And obviously we, we distanced ourselves from him. Um, I have a soft spot in my heart for, for him because I just simply have been around him more than most people to know that he just simply mentally is challenged. PJ also admits that he has a soft spot for Jason because of his mental disabilities, but states that this is a test to see if Jason really misses him or just the free goodies. Jason claims to be sincerely sorry, but ultimately asks if he can borrow a spare drone from PJ. He also asks if he can be invited to a screening of the new Star Wars movie, before asking PJ for a Christmas gift. He revisits the drone topic, and PJ ultimately agrees to buy him a $120 drone from Walmart. Since everyone knows Jason, they're convinced he will crash the drone either way. The drone saga continues when PJ writes into the rules of the 2018 Beat PJ contest that Jason can't enter unless he buys an actual drone. After Jason tries to scam PJ by posting a picture of a drone he found on Google, PJ says that he must purchase a quality drone, at least 500 bucks. Jason then sends PJ multiple texts begging for money. So I said to Jason flat out, Brad told me you didn't get the, get the drone. And this is what he's saying. He goes, call me, it's important. And I said, I'm not speaking right now. He goes, PJ, call me important. It's about the drone. Broke, I return it, crap. Trying to get another one. Best quality, standard, it cost 500 buck. Oh, no. What going need, get good quality, B, crap, last, broke, crap, Walmart. Lowest they cost. <laughs> Jason does eventually buy a drone, but as the Blackstone employees predicted, he crashes it into himself. Yeah. 
What the fuck happened to your arm? What is that? That's a cut from my dogs. My dogs. Bullshit. A big dog. That's the drone propeller, you lying fuck. <laughs> the drone propeller. God. You could say it and you crashed yeah. the fucking drone. I didn't crash it. It didn't break. It still works. You said the propeller broke. The propeller broke when I have more spare propellers. And you tried to lie saying it was a dog. Like, you don't think I know this shit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All you right. can't help yourself. You're just, you can't help yourself from lying. It's All unbelievable. Right. You ready? In another installment of People Who Have No Idea What They're Getting Themselves Into, a man named Big Rob Fitness inserts himself into the Genovaverse. He releases a very bizarre video where he pretends to be multiple superheroes who are defending Jason, in particular from Cali Muscle. Batman! Batman! Where's Batman? Batman? Oh, protein. All superheroes need to eat, too. Egg whites, that's right, get some protein in, and go catch the villain, the bad guy, Kelly Muscle, who's bullying Jason Genova. We're gonna get him, we're gonna get him. If he's not in jail, I'm gonna get him. Okay, let me get some protein down. Go find the villain, the bad guy, Kelly Muscle, who's been bullying Jason Genova. Shame on you, Kelly Muscle. I'm going to find him. Rob has worked with mentally handicapped people in the past, and it's possible he is confused about the true nature of Jason Genova. This idea seems more likely when Rob, who now has access to Jason's YouTube channel, starts blocking people who leave negative comments. This may actually be the only way you could make Jason's channel worse. With his videos being unwatchable, the only reason anybody has stuck around this long was to insult Jason and spread memes in the unregulated comment section. In another poorly advised decision, Big Rob convinces Jason to split with the Misfits, citing vulgar language and the Misfits stealing his t-shirt money. The more likely scenario is that the sales simply dried up alongside Jason's following. Jason takes particular issue with Big J Masters for his actions at the 2016 Genova Halloween party. Orenthal James Simpson, <laughs> University of Southern California. Get the back. 32. Bam. And I'm ready to kill white bitches that have little black babies. <laughs> he almost immediately started making sexual advances towards Jason's mom, who was somehow even more intoxicated. The sexual tension only increased as Jay licked and sucked on Jane's toes. Come on, skill. Mr. All Talk, suck those toes. Oh, for film? <laughs> for what? For your own pleasure. Wait. Oh. <laughs> oh my golly. Get the scum between the toes, Jay. Oh my god. Look at this. Oh my god. Get the scum between the toes. While the party had been slowly spinning out of control all night, things really came to a head when Jason's mom started bobbing for apples. As she was bent over with her face in the bucket, Jay simulated analingus and made lewd comments. Jay's drunken debauchery went one step too far when he attempted to spank Big Lenny, who was dressed in drag. Andrew! Yeah? You want to see me spank Lenny? Well, Jay, That'll be great. Bend over. You gonna make me? Bend over. Okay, you want to touch me, let's go outside. Hey, not in the house. Let's go outside. Uh-oh. Don't do it in the house. Shit. I have stems on you, too. Fortunately, after a tense moment between the two 300-pound silverback gorillas, the night ended without an altercation. Because of the year-and-a-half-old incident, Jason actually ordered 66's Big J in exchange for a $300 replica lightsaber purchased by PJ Braun, who had been feuding with Big J for months. Since everyone still hates Jason, the Order 66 is ineffectual. Big J begins firing back at Jason, and as a result, Big Rob begins threatening to fight Jay Masters. In response, Masters, who now claims to be the new Sith Lord, calls Rob a pedophile and threatens to kill him if he ever comes to Florida. Hey, pedophile Rob, fat fitness guy, keep your hands off the handicapped children. Or I'm going to rip your fucking arms off and shove them up your fucking ass. And if you want to come down to Florida in your little Batman costume, 
and come to LA Fitness and confront me, I will fucking kill you. A 50-year-old alcoholic, long-haul trucker claiming to be a Sith Lord is threatening to kill another 50-year-old man dressed in a Batman costume for defending a 33-year-old man who launched a fictional military order from the Star Wars prequels in exchange for a $300 toy lightsaber purchased by the head of a multi-billion dollar supplement company. Predictably, Big Rob joins the laundry list of people who got in over their head with Jason and were forced to quit. And Jason Genova have some humanity. I want to expose Jason Genova. I'm sorry, guys. This channel is positive. I've always wanted it to be positive, and I want it to go in a positive direction. Anyone to get involved with Jason Genova is is going to have trouble. I'll tell you that much. The kid is, the man is trouble, and he knows what he's doing. Let me tell you guys, a lot of it is, is a lot of how he acts is an act. Um, I think he does, he, of course, he has some... Um, issues going on and I would never I would never pick on him or call him names or whatever it is but this guy is something else he's all about himself almost every conversation we've ever had he tried to get money out of me or he tried to get everything he's ever we talked about it's for about Jason 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 and I do have connections and relationships which I would never, ever introduce him to. I would be ashamed to. The guy is something else, man. Jason immediately orders 66s him, but nobody cares anymore. Big Rob gets positive feedback for turning on Jason, who everyone now hates. However, when Rob starts releasing video after video about Jason and the Misfits, it's obvious that the entire affair was little more than an attempt to draw attention to his minuscule YouTube channel. Oddly, Big Rob may be the only leech to get more out of Jason than he put in, as he was able to gain the 1,000 subscribers necessary to monetize his videos. Completely alone, Jason starts up a prank channel that goes about as well as you can imagine. This is Steve Urko. How you doing? This is from Family Matters. I'm Steve Urko. This is Steve Urko. You want me to give you a wedgie? This is really Steve Urko. This is Steve Urko. Yep. I would love, I, I can't let you give me a wedgie. The Delray Misfits aren't doing particularly well either, though. The YouTube channel and podcast have been going through a drought of interesting content for a while, which culminated in Big Rob of all people being their guest. Perhaps in an effort to breathe life back into the channel, they managed to pull out something many thought was impossible. Andrew Kalora, demigod-like figure of myth and legend to the Misfit Maniacs and Genoa's Witnesses, makes his long-awaited return to Del Rey for an epic collab with his former powerlifting buddy, Big Lenny. The two even have a good old-fashioned parking lot pose down with Jason, who is now in the worst shape of his life. At least when Jason would go Hindenburg mode in the past, he still had some muscle under all of the fat. Now, even that is gone. At this point, the future of Jason Genova is uncertain. He seems to have patched things up with the Misfits, as he recently made his return to their podcast. That being said, the quality of his YouTube channel is possibly at its worst. I know that sounds hard to believe, but Jason is an exceptional individual. He now uploads almost nothing but rambling vlogs, which somehow are getting even more dislikes than ever before. It would appear that people have grown tired of Jason, as many witnesses have shifted their attention to Big Rob. Originally, most people thought Rob was either a misguided humanitarian trying to help Jason, or just another in the long list of characters to get in over their head with the Sith Lord. Recent events have shined a light on the more unstable aspects of Rob's personality. In particular, Rob's interactions with Johnny Bravo have displayed a high degree of delusion and paranoia. Because you're a devil. I'm a devil? Mm -hmm. Why is that? You're a devil. Why is that? You are a devil. What, what happens when your mother and father, are, um, would you like them to pass away? Tell me that. Would you be happy? Excuse me? Would you like your mom and dad to pass away? Dude, you're taking this shit to a completely different level, dude. What are you okay, talking listen. about? My, my wife's father just died. Leave her alone. Dude, why are you I talking about my, why are you talking about my parents now? Because would you like them to fucking die and someone to harass you like you're, you're doing to me and my 
my family. Her father just died. Have some self-respect. Dude, I, I honestly, I'm going to call the fucking hospital or somebody to come help Please you, dude. Do so. Please do so. The FBI's already involved, you fucker. For his part, Jason is currently engaged in a strange feud with a YouTuber named Average Rich, who he refers to as Average Rich, you're going down, pinworm. Jason planned to compete against Average Rich in the July 4th Muscle Mania, but at the time of writing whether Jason will even compete is uncertain. As of late, Jason is uploading lifting videos more frequently, but they're pretty unbearable, consisting of boring workouts and Jason reciting, This one's for you, Average Rich, you're going down, pinworm. For every workout video, there are at least two vlogs. To call them vlogs is actually being generous, because they're a little more than repetitive monologues about his struggles with mental disabilities. He does look better than he has since losing his Blackstone coaches. But if Jason's past is any indication of his future, it's only a matter of time before he hits a new low. And that is the story of Jason Genova. It's a story that began nearly a decade ago, when Jason claimed he would sacrifice everything to accomplish his goal of becoming a pro bodybuilder. In spite of overwhelming support, his own greed and laziness won out in the end. Jason Genova is a cautionary tale of a man obsessed with fame, who alienated everyone around him, including his coaches, his friends, and his fans. But as Andrew once said, it's a story that never ends.